Today I'm going to show you how to remove the bracelet on your Rolex. I'm also going to show you how to add a leather strap or add a NATO strap to your Rolex. And then I'm going to talk about how your Rolex case might damage your leather strap. I'm going to put time links in the description below so if you want to jump to a particular process just open up the description down there and then jump to where you want to go to. Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I'm Adrian. If you want to support the channel, just hit that little subscribe button down the bottom there and the bell icon as well so you can get notification when I drop a new video. And naturally, we're talking about straps and removing bracelets. So all the straps that you're gonna to see today are straps that I sell over at barkandjack.shop along with the watch tool. So we've got three watches here and the reason I've got three watches is that they all have different systems for bracelets. They're in order of age at the moment. This one is a Rolex Explorer from 1998. This is a Rolex Submariner 14060M from 2004, and then this is a Kermit, a Rolex Submariner date from 2008. If you have a Rolex from 2010 onwards, it's likely it has a ceramic bezel and therefore it has a very similar bracelet system to this watch here. So you want to jump to the video where we talk about watches with solid end links. Despite the fact the Explorer is an older watch, it actually has a newer bracelet system than on this Submariner. This bracelet has hollow end links and you can tell this because it has a line between the final link and the end link. It also doesn't have any lug holes. This watch also has hollow end links and this case has lug holes. This watch has solid end links. There isn't a line between what would be the final link and the link that actually connects to the case here. So it is one solid bit of steel. So we need to remove the bracelet. I'm gonna start with the Submariner because it has the oldest bracelet system and I have a few tools over here. This is probably the most common strap pin tool. It's quite a large thing. I've actually lost the end pin, uh, but it has a fork end and a pin end. If you don't have that and you have an iPhone or a paper clip, then if you have a holes case, you can use this. This is just an iPhone SIM card remover thing. Uh, and it works perfectly. You just slot it in and job's done. But I'm actually going to use a Bark and Jack strap pin tool, which is the compact travel thing. You just unscrew each side and reveals the right tool. So we've got a pin this side and then we have a fork this side. We don't need the fork because we have holes in our case, so I'm going to put the fork back and we're just going to use the pin. So I hold the head of the watch in my hands. With my fingers, I support the head of the watch and with my thumb and first finger, I try and pull the bracelet away from the case. As I'm putting pressure on, I then just push in one side, push in the other side. The bracelet comes away as I've already applied the pressure. Take out the, sp the spring bar, you have the hollow end link, and then you just repeat the same for the other side. So again, just hold the head of the watch in your hands, thumb, first finger, apply pressure on the bracelet, and then just push the pin in, and then rotate, push the pin in, and then the bracelet comes away. I'm gonna put on my favorite Bark and Jack strap. This is a Shell Cordovan uh, strap, original Halloween. Uh, they've actually sold out. These sold out within 24 hours of them going live on Bark and Jack shop. So just, uh, you can't get, I pro should probably be showing you something else if I was being smart about this. But basically you just load the strap up with your spring bars. The way that I remember which way round, whether you have the, the long piece or the short piece, the way that I remember which way round it is, when you look at your watch, you always have that little flappy bit on the bottom. That means that the long piece must go on this side of the watch so I can flap around and stick around the other side. So the buckle end is always on the top of the watch. So I feed in one side of the spring bar, hold it in place with thumb and first finger. I then basically feed it in with something blunt and plastic, feed it in, move it around until it clicks and then we're in. Now whilst we're here, let's quickly talk about your Rolex case damaging your leather strap. So as you can see, I've, I've been wearing the strap for probably about a month now, um, and the case has just been buffing this little part here. It shouldn't damage the strap. You, you might get scuffing, um, but it shouldn't destroy the strap. What happens is Rolex mount the, the holes for the spring bar too close to the case. They also don't file down the edge of the case. So this is pretty much a blade here. The newer watches are worse than the, the older watches, but this is very, very sharp, and there's very little room for a, uh, a strap to, to fit in here. If I quickly show you this Grand Seiko using exactly the same technique, you can see in this Grand Seiko case that there's a slight ridge here to allow for straps to feed in and out. Probably only gives an extra millimeter of space, but that's all you need to allow for the strap to, to be added. So I don't really believe that Rolex want you to, to change the strap on your watch. It's, they, I believe they've done this for a reason so that you, you don't mess about with a watch. So there you go. That is how you add a leather strap to a Rolex. This particular model was the one with the holes case 
and hollow endlings. So I'm going to show you something slightly different now. We're going to put a NATO strap on this watch and it doesn't have any lug holes. It does have hollow end links, so we're going to need to go in at the back here. So what we need to do is we need to change this tool around. So we don't want the pin side, we want the fork side. So there we go. It's just a, a very sharp little fork. So it's pretty much the same principle as before. It's just this time it's a little more tricky. Now there are tools that you can get. They're quite pricey, but there are tools that you can get. They're essentially tiny little tweezers that go in these tiny holes here and safely pull out the spring bar so it doesn't damage anything. Now I look after my watches, but I don't baby them. And that's why you'll see uh, scratches on, uh, I like to change my straps and so you'll see scratches. What I do is it's pretty much the same principle as with the holes cases. I hold the, the head of the watch, apply pressure to the bracelet. So I'm trying to separate them already. So as soon as the, uh, the spring bar gives, then it's gonna move out of the hole and, and stay out of the hole. Now with this tiny little aperture here, I basically slide in the fork and slide down to move the spring bar out of the way. And then just do the same on the other side. And there we have it, the spring bar is out. And then you just repeat the same, I guess you can see the aperture a little bit here. So this is where I slide in the tool. And then again, so we're gonna fit a NATO strap to this guy. Now the good thing about NATO straps is that they're, they're quick, easy things to attach to a watch. They're, they're good fun, they're relatively cheap and compared to leather straps, for example, and so it's, it's easy to get lots of them. So to fit a NATO strap normally to any watch, really, uh, you just feed it in the top, slide it through and then slide it through the bottom and then you have this extra flap and then you slide it through the last keeper. The idea behind a NATO strap is it's military use that's why it's called a, a NATO strap. Basically it means a spring bar can fail on a watch and the watch will just let's say you're running around the battlefield you need to know the time because you have to go to a rendezvous point at a certain time and suddenly your spring bar fails and your watch just flaps about. Normally, on any other watch strap, your watch will fall off because you need that complete loop and you've broken that complete loop. Because your watch is on a NATO strap, a solid piece of material, that complete loop is still there. The reason for the extra flap is to keep the watch, basically the watch cannot move beyond this point and this point. Back in the day when NATO straps were created, watches had fixed strap bars. And the gap between the, the strap bar and the watch was relatively large, which meant the head of the watch could move about. These two points prevent the watch from moving beyond this point and this point. Therefore, every time you rotate your wrist, your watch will always be in the same position. So that's why the NATO strap has this extra part here. So now I'm gonna show you how to remove the bracelet on a newer Rolex. So any ceramic Rolex or any Rolex with solid end links. Exactly the same process. You just need to locate the aperture at the back and with your fork tool, again, apply pressure with your hand on the head of the watch. Use your first finger and thumb on the bracelets and then slide the strap pin tool in. Slide it down to get the spring bar out. And it should come out. And notice this time how the end link doesn't fall off the bracelet. It's a lot easier for me to show you the aperture when half the bracelet is off. But basically you see the aperture here. You get your strap pin tool in, slide down, applying pressure in, slide down. So now I'm gonna show you putting a NATO strap on one of these guys. So here you can see how tight the gap is between the big fat spring bar and that case. There's very, very little space there. There certainly isn't any space to feed through a nylon NATO strap, or any strap for that matter. If you do force it in, all you're gonna do is with that sharp edge of the case, you're just gonna scuff all the way down your NATO strap. You will damage a nylon strap, you'll damage a leather strap, and it'll it's not a good look. <laughs> you look like a rookie, basically. So what you do is you place the watch on the strap where you want it. I always place it between these two keepers, right in the middle. Fold over one edge of the strap and then hold it down tight. And then you reveal the holes for your spring bar to go back in. Just place it in. So that's now in place, so then you can just fold it over and do the other one. And then just feed this flap through the extra part of the NATO strap. Job done. Never force your straps onto your watches because you will end up breaking something and you don't want to end up scuffing your straps. To put a Rolex bracelet back on, it doesn't really matter what era of bracelet you have, they all operate in exactly the same way when it comes to putting it back on. Because bracelets with hollow end links are a little bit more tricky, that's what I'm gonna show you. Just so you know, if, if you're like me and you have multiple old watches, um, end links can be different. So for example, the one in the left hand is a 556D, and the one in the right hand is a 501B. Personally, I always start with the Rolex crown in the right orientation. So you feed the spring bar through the hollow end link, 
And then because I have the Rolex crown on the bracelet in the right orientation, that just needs to match the Rolex crown on the dial. So if they're both in the right direction, then the bracelet is going to attach in the right way. I hold the bracelet in place with my thumb and then with a plastic implement, I use a, a plastic ruler, you could use a credit card, you can use anything, just anything that is blunt and won't scratch. And then just move it around. Anything that's blunt and won't scratch the case, you just wiggle it around until it locks in position. And then you just repeat the same for the other side. I'll scratch this side in first, so that is now in. And then just slide this bit in. Job done. And you know the bracelet is in the right orientation because the Rolex crown is the right way up. You rotate the bracelet round and the Rolex crown is the right way up. That way when you're wearing the watch, the logo is always in the right orientation. All of these straps and this tool are available at barkandjack.shop. Guys, I hope you found this video useful and you haven't scratched your case up too much. And if you have any extra advice or any tips, do drop a comment down below. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, do hit that subscribe button down there as well. If you want to check out previous videos, jump over to barkandjack.com. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. And also check out the group I'm part of, at wearehortics. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.